we will now discuss uh, unbounded operators and adjoints so we will now look at linear maps which are not necessarily defined on the entire vector space uh, and also which may not be bounded or continuous in the sense that we have known up to now. The continuous linear operators or bounded linear operators which we have studied so far will come as a subclass of this as a particular case. So let us uh, have V and W Banach spaces. So, an unbounded operator linear operator A is a linear map defined on a subspace D A contained in V taking values in W. Okay, so such a map, so it is a linear map, but it, uh, it can be defined only on a subspace, not necessarily the entire space. So we say D of A is the domain of A. We denote by R of A is the range or image of A. So we say that A is from D A contained in V into W. Okay, so R of A, so this will be contained in V and this will be contained in W. The operator is bounded, is said to be bounded if there exists a C positive such that norm AX in W is less than or equal to C times norm X in V, that is the usual condition. Only now we have for every x in d a because that is where the operator is defined. Okay, so the uh, then okay, it is said to be densely defined. A is densely defined if d of a is dense in v. That is, d a closure is equal to v. Okay. Then we define the graph of A is set of all x a x where x belongs to D of A and this of course is contained in V cross W. Okay. And the operator A is closed if G A is closed. So, the graph of A should be, so this is called the graph of A. Okay. So, it is a closed subspace of G cross W, then you say the operator is closed. Okay. So, to define an operator, we need to specify two things. So, to define A, we need 1 D of A. So, we have to say what where it is defined and 2 what its action is A of X for every X in D. So, we have to specify both these things in order to completely define an operator A. Okay, so then the null space of A 
or n of a equals set of all x in d a such that a x equal to 0. Unlike uh, normal linear, uh, continuous linear operator, you cannot say that n a is closed. However, remark, if a is closed, you can check this very easily, then n a is closed. Now, all this uh, terminology is a little bit unfortunate. Normally, logically, we should have first considered these operators and then considered the continuous linear operators or bounded linear operators, which we have been studying hitherto as a subclass. But historically, this is how it has been evolving and so we will use this terminology. Henceforth, of course, I will say continuous linear operator to distinguish between bounded linear operators which may not be defined on the whole space. Okay? So, uh, for me a continuous linear operator means d a equals v and a is bounded in the usual uh, uh, as we have been studying up to now. Otherwise, when I say bounded operator, then it may be just defined on d a and not on the whole space. Okay. So, let us give an example. Let us take v equals w equals c 0 1 and let us take d a to be c 1 of 0 1 continuously differentiable functions on the closed interval 0 1 and then you define a of u equals u dash which is the first derivative of this. So, if a u is in d of a then you it is a c 1 function. So, its derivative is continuous and that is exactly where we are. Okay. So, now first of all A is densely defined because C 1 of 0 1 is dense in C 0 1. In particular, you have the Weierstrass approximation theorem. Okay. So, then uh, it is uh, range is entire W. C01 because if you take any continuous function, then uh, its indefinite integral is a differentiable function and its derivative is the given function. So, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, you have so this is nothing but the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. Then what is n of a? This is just constant functions. So, that is precisely the uh, thing. Now, uh, 4. So, suppose what is convergence? So, what is the norm here? It is the usual sup norm, which is the norm infinity, and therefore, convergence in this norm means uniform convergence. And therefore, if you take un converges to u and uh, aun, which is un dash converges to b, then we know that is un converges to uniformly and un dash converges uniformly, then we know from real analysis course on uniform convergence that u belongs to c1 and u dash equals v. Okay? And therefore, this implies that graph of a is closed, that is a is closed. 5, A is not bounded. We have already seen this, that is you cannot have a constant, so there does not exist C such that norm U dash is less than or equal to C times norm U. And for this we took the sequence, we have already seen this U n of t equals t power n. So, then uh, norm u in u n infinity is always 1, norm u n dash, so norm u n is always 1, norm u n dash is n and therefore, you can never have a constant like this because c is a finite number. So, this is an example. Okay. So, now we are going to make an important definition and for that we need some notation. This is called the duality bracket. So, 
So, we take x in v and let us take f in v star. So, up to now the evaluation I have denoted as f of x. Now, I am going to define as f I should probably uh, write it the other way around does not matter. So, this is f x and to ensure where we are working. So, I will say v star p. So, this is a bracket the first element in the bracket will be the linear functional and x is the point where it is being evaluated and this bracket is just the evaluation of these two and to say where we are working. So, we are saying v star and v and therefore, this is a notation for the duality bracket. Okay. So, now let v w be Banach and a from d a contained in v taking values in w a densely defined operator. This is important. Okay. So, now we are going to make a definition of a subspace. So, z is equal to set of all v in w star such that there exists a constant c positive which of course depends on v such that for all x in d of a we have norm of uh, sorry mod of v a x is less than equal to c times norm x. So, here this is w star w because v is in w star a x is in w. So, this is uh, the duality bracket there and this of course, is the norm in v. Okay. So, this is z. So, then z is a subspace that you can easily check. Okay. So, if v belongs to z and x belongs to d of a define g of x as v evaluated at a x again this is w star w. Then mod g x is less than or equal to c times norm x. So, g is a continuous linear functional. So, by Han Banach there exists an extension g v to all of v. Why did I leave some space here? I want to write unique extension. Han Banach extensions is not, are not unique and but now it will be unique because d a closure is the whole of v. So, if you have something even in Han Banach theorem we have seen if some if you uh, what is the test of density if something vanishes a uh, linear functional vanishes on uh, the space then it vanishes everywhere. Okay. So, that automatically tells you that if you have g which is defined on a dense subspace then it has a unique extension to the to all of v. Okay. So, g of v is so, g v is again a continuous linear functional. So, now g v belongs uh, is in v star. Okay. So, starting with something in w star we have defined something in v star provided it is in um, z. Okay. So, we have uh, we have taken v in z. Okay. So, now we will make a definition. So, v w Banach a from d a in v taking values in w densely defined z g v z as defined above and for v in z g v as defined above. Okay. 
okay then we set d of a star equal to z which is contained in w star and a star from d of a star contained in w star to uh, v star is defined by a star v equals g v. The map a star is called the adjoint of it. Okay, so this is the uh, so the adjoint is defined for densely uh, defined operators. Of course, a star need not be densely defined; it is defined on Z or d a star, which is some subspace. That's all we know. We have no information uh, other than that. Okay, so the important characterization is if uh, u belongs to d of a and v belongs to d of a star you have from the definition of gv what is the definition of gv here it is v of ax okay so we have that a star v acting on u this is v star v because this is in v star this is in v this is nothing but by the definition v acting on a u and this is in w star w so this is the fundamental defining relationship for the adjoint and if any map any continuous linear functional in v star defines this relationship then it be by the density and uniqueness we know that it has to be a star b okay so let us briefly look at continuous linear functionals so remark suppose a v to w continuous linear functional that means d a is all of v and norm of a x is less than or equal to norm a times norm x okay so this we have now you take any v in w star you have that v a x this is in uh, w star w modulus is less than or equal to norm v into norm a x which is norm a times norm x and therefore you have so this will be the constant c and therefore you have that w star is the ent entire w star is the domain so the uh, adjoint is defined on the entire space okay so this is uh, uh, information so if you have continuous linear operators in fact we will see a little more about this in a theorem at the end of this uh, session okay so let us see some examples so let us look at finite dimensional spaces so in a finite dimensional space all subspaces are closed therefore in particular uh, if you have da contained in v finite dimensional densely defined dense so this means da closure equals v but da closure is same as da because every subspace in finite dimensional space is automatically closed therefore when you say in the finite dimensional case there is uh, it is always defined on the entire space a densely defined operator is every so we can and you know once you have this we have already observed that you can define the adjoint on all of the dual space which is again isomorphic to the same space so let us take cn and then the dual is the same okay so if x belongs to cn namely x equals x1 xn 
and if y belongs to C n star which is also C n again and y equals y 1 y n then you have y x the duality bracket is nothing but sigma i equals 1 to n x i y i uh, conjugate this is the convention if you have r n to r n then this conjugate won't be there it will be just sigma x i y i now let a from c n to c m be a linear transformation so then a will be represented by some matrix a i j which is uh, n by m matrix m by n so m rows n columns okay c n to c m is m by n matrix so what is a star y x so this will be by definition y a x okay and therefore that will be sigma i equals 1 to n okay i th component of a x that is sigma j equals 1 to n a i j x j multiplied by y i bar okay so now i want to write it in the form a y a star y acting on x so i should bring out the x's outside and then bring in the y with and everything should be in conjugate form for the a star y so this will be equal to sigma j equals 1 to n of sigma i equals 1 to n a bar i j y i bar x j and therefore we have if a star is the matrix a star i j then it automatically follows that a star i j is nothing but a j i conjugate okay and this is the usual conjugate transpose of the matrix A. Yeah. So, this is uh, how uh, the adjoint works. In case of real, it is just the usual transpose of the matrix. There is no conjugation involved.